Okay, we're in a bit of tight space here, but I've just finished another installation of a 200. Uh, this is replacing a, an Ariston boiler. I think it was about uh, 10, 11 years old. Um, that thing over there. Um, so, um, but they had underfloor heating here, and it was doing its usual thing of, the lady was always complaining that the floor was cold, where the room stats were satisfied and the loops had closed off. Um, so she was turning the room stats up to try and get some warmth in the floor. And obviously the, right, the air temperature was rising and the house was uncomfortable. And uh, the running the boiler at high temperature and cooling it down on a standard manifold. So that's all come out. Now I did have two pipes going down to my underfloor circuit from the loft already, which was very convenient and those two there to do the radiators. So the first floor is completely underfloor, the top floor is radiators, so you can see two non-return valves in there and a pipe sensor there to pick up the flow temperature. I haven't insulated this yet. Uh, right, okay, so one mixed circuit and one unmixed circuit. This is the pump being reused from the underfloor manifold downstairs and this is a new pump that I'm trying out from circulating pumps. Looks very much like the Wheelo. Uh, seems quite nice actually, but I haven't set any of that up yet. It's not done any of the balancing or the flow rates. And I was looking at how I was going to fit this in here. I only have this wooden board here, and obviously no room for a Viesman low loss header. And so I was going to try out the Kimi header, and it worked out it was pretty difficult to make a Kimi header for the Viesman. I thought about gluing close couple of T's, and that was going to be an awkward layout. So I've come up with this. Uh, basically the upright header here you can see my return path going back to the boiler there from the base of the header then I've got my collection manifold there going off to collect the returns from the two circuits this of course has to be the um, return from the underfloor heating because it connects into the cold side of the three port mixing valve this one here being the return from the radiator circuit coming back into my manifold and going off this way and on occasion this way uh, flow straight out the boiler I've kicked that over inside at 45 put a 45 on there to drop it straight into the top of the header just to give me enough space to squeeze in these two circuits just enough space to pop on my pumps there I think if I'd had a two Grumfoss pumps I might have had a bit of problem there actually squeezing the connection box in I'd have to tilt it a bit of an angle and uh, rapid drain point on the base of my header drain point on the lowest part of the cylinder fly and return there and this is the fly and returns now I picked up a lot of this was off of the old pipe work from the old boiler so these aren't actually positions I'd have chosen to go through to next door and hasten to add that these burn marks on the wood are not from my soldering. Um, but, um, we're already there. So, okay, uh, that's it. So, mixed circuit. We've got uh, going down to our underfloor. That gives us completely flow temperature matched to the heating requirements on the ground floor. And we've got the unmixed circuit for radiators on the top floor there. Uh, on this all on weather compensation so perfect temperature control as normal and that's it so, not much more to it than that nice and simple and it works and as I've tried to explain to you before this is actually cheaper it's cheaper to buy this boiler and have these controls than it is to buy an underfloor heating system with all the various room stats uh, and the the fixed mixing valve on the bottom there and the installation cost is lower as well so you can have a really really top end kit for a lower price QED